Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at the Panasonic Toughbook, the miniature Panasonic Toughbook that I recently featured in my last viewer donations video. So this machine was sent out to me by Alex, who has sent out two packages to me so far. And I want to thank you again, Alex, for your two very generous donations. And this was the kind of the main item of that last package, the thing that he told me he was going to be sending over along with those couple of games that pong uh, the next level game and uh, there was a movie in there as well in fact i've got pong the next level right here which we will possibly be taking a look at in a future video but for now we're going to set it aside but yeah the panasonic cfm 33 a very unique model of Panasonic Toughbook, mainly because of the form factor. I mean, again, here's that CD case, and you can see how it compares. This is a really small laptop, and like I said in the original unboxing video, I didn't even know that Panasonic made these machines, and when I got the package from Alex, I was like, is this, did he send everything? Like, I was actually, when I picked it up at the post office, I was, uh, I was wondering if he had sent something else, and he was sending the laptop in you know, a separate package. Because in the photos that he sent me, I didn't really think, uh, I mean, I just figured that it was the size of a regular laptop, which it obviously isn't. But the Toughbook, for those of you who aren't aware, is a line of Panasonic laptops that is still around today. In fact, there is a current model in the Panasonic Toughbook line that is very similar in name to this one. This is, again, the CFM33, and today Panasonic produces the CF33. So if you were looking for information on that laptop and you typed in CF33 into the YouTube search box and you ended up on this video, well, this is not the laptop you're looking for. Now, I was able to find some information about the CFM33, but it's rather limited. The only piece of documentation I was able to come across is this pamphlet from Panasonic right here, which does give us a lot of information. But even after going on the Wayback Machine, the Google News Archive, and even logging on to Panasonic's FTP server, I wasn't able to find any release information about this, like when it came out, how much it sold for, etc. cetera. Uh, now I believe, and you can tell from the title, there's 1999 in the title, I'm pretty certain that this machine came out in 1999. The reason for that is the dates on the very bottom, or what appears to be a date, on the very bottom of this official Panasonic pamphlet right here, if you want to call it that. Right there, it says CFM 33 3 slash 99. Now, I assume this is March 99. And just to confirm that, I printed out the pamphlet, the same pamphlet for the previous model, which is the CFM 32. And down here, sure enough, it says CFM 32 8 slash 98. So I'm fairly certain that's what's being indicated down here. The month and the year of either the release of the machine itself or when these two pamphlets slash manuals were printed. Now, it's not really a manual it's more of a kind of pamphlet slash spec sheet kind of thing because it contains a lot of information it contains information about the hardware the port selection of the machine what came in the box there were some additional accessories that, that you could order uh, panasonic's phone number down here and their website and up here it's got kind of four main selling points you know like the weight up to six hour battery life it's got the brilliant daybright arx tft active matrix color lcd with touch screen which I didn't even realize this thing had a touch screen. We will be exploring that later on. The only thing missing from here is the price. Like there's no information about the price. So I don't know if this was either included in the box, which actually I, I believe this was from the website that I got it from. I think it was manualslib.com, even though this isn't really a manual, but we will be referring to this throughout this video because it contains a lot of information about this machine. For now though, we will set it aside and take a look at the machine itself. Now, when you think of a Panasonic Toughbook today, you probably think of a machine that looks like this. And those Toughbooks that are around today definitely look more durable than this machine right here, but that's not to say this machine isn't durable. In fact, one of these selling points up here says it has a magnesium alloy LCD case and shock damped hard disk drive. Now, uh, as for the port selection, well, you are kind of limited on here and that kind of goes hand in hand with having a smaller form factor laptop. So you don't have a lot of ports that you would expect from a laptop, especially around this time. On the front here, you've got a microphone jack and a headphone jack. We flip it over to the left side. The only ports you have are the power port and one USB port, likely USB 1.0 or 1.1. And on the right side here, you've got two PCMCIA card slots 
infrared and the power switch and on the back you got nothing you got no display out you got no ps2 port nothing which you might say is kind of crazy for a laptop released in 1999. well what panasonic did is they included this right here in the box and this is a port replicator so right here if we go back to this pamphlet it says right here accessories you got a port replicator and the asterisk right next to replicator as you can see right down here it says included in standard package items can also be purchased separately so in the box you got the port replicator you also got an external floppy drive in the box because if you saw there's no floppy disk drive there's certainly no cd-rom on here uh even with the port replicator obviously it's not going to give you a floppy disk drive right so that was included in the box you got an external one but unfortunately i don't have that so we don't have the floppy disk drive we do have the power adapter so we can power this thing on because the battery probably doesn't hold a charge anymore there was also an extended life battery pack and a memory card a 32 and 64 megabyte uh, memory card that you could get uh, as well so yeah the port replicator what this allows you to do is on the very bottom of the machine, if we flip it over, you've got this little door here that you can slide open and you get this port right here on the bottom that the port replicator plugs into. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna flip the port replicator around, plug it in, and there we go, it's in. It's not really secure, it's not really connected to the machine. I mean, it is, but you can pull it out very, very easily, right? Well, Panasonic has these two little knobs on here, kind of similar to something you might see on a VGA cable, though just a much larger uh, version of it. And what you can do is push these in and kind of screw them into the laptop itself. Actually, just to show you, if I take it out here, and I gotta unscrew this one a little bit more, uh, you've got on the back these two screw holes and these two screws obviously screw into them so you could use a flathead screwdriver if you want to uh, but we're just going to push them in and just you know tighten them you know so it's finger tight here and we'll do that on the other side as well and once it's tightened up i mean i can pick the machine up by the port replicator and uh, i have no you know fear that it's going to separate oh and also it may become hot not a malfunction and even with the port replicator installed, it's still a very, very small machine. It only extends it out by a few inches here, and it kind of adds this, this foot on the bottom that props the machine up a little bit. Uh, now let's open the machine up because I'm sure you guys want to see what's on the inside. Of course, if you saw the original unboxing video, you already know how this thing looks. And yes, this is a full-fledged keyboard, though it's missing the number pad. But I think if they were to put the number pad on it, they'd have to make it even smaller. So, you know, they obviously have to make the keyboard pretty small for it to fit in the laptop's case here so you're not going to get the greatest typing experience out of it you can get by with it but it's not going to be something that you want to use like if you're using this machine as your daily driver your daily portable machine uh unless you are traveling with I me mean, if you have this set up on a desk you're probably going to want to use that port replicator which by the way and this is a great segue into the ports on the back so let's take a look at the ports on the port replicator you've got a ps2 port that functions as both a mouse and keyboard ps2 port so uh, yes if you wanted to plug in a standard much larger keyboard you could do that if you had this machine set up on a desk which you would likely be doing if you had the port replicator installed this port right here is for the external floppy disk drive that's where it plugs in you've got your vga out right here to connect the second monitor you've got your parallel port and a serial port uh, on the far right here or on the far left depending on how you've got it set up so yeah there you go and it's super nice that panasonic includes that in the box uh, because, you know, certain other manufacturers make you buy this thing. Of course, their port selection isn't as limited as what you've got on the Panasonic Toughbook uh, on, on this specific model here. So without any further ado, let's power this thing on and take a look at it. Now, I'm fairly certain that the battery is not going to hold the charge. We can try to power it on, but yeah, it's nothing's going to happen there. Here is the power adapter here, which is, it appears to be the original Panasonic power adapter. All right, so we've got the adapter plugged into the wall, and we're going to plug it into the computer on the left side here. And let's flick that power switch. There we go. Now, according to the documentation right here, uh, this machine shipped with Windows 95. 
uh, and we can see that right down here, preloaded Windows 95. Post startup errors. The following errors were detected when the system was started. Code 162, configuration changes occurred in 163, date and time incorrect. So we're going to continue and we're going to go down to, I guess, system summary. And okay, system memory. Now this is great because we're gonna be able to compare this to the spec sheet here. Now, according to the uh, spec sheet over here, or this part of the spec sheet, we have a Pentium 266 megahertz uh, with 512 kilobytes of level two cache, a four gig hard drive, 32 megabytes of RAM, expandable in 96 megabytes, um, system memory, though this I guess is not gonna show us, oh yeah, 31 megabytes of extended memory, 640K of system memory. So this, the RAM has not been upgraded, that's all really we get here. Uh, BIOS version V100 L10, okay. Let's go to system setup and date and time, we wanna go down here. And we're gonna set the time so it, it thinks it's January 1st, 1998. Now is this thing Y2K compatible? Uh, let's find out. I would hope it was considering it was released in 1999. So let's say uh, today is, I'm just gonna say January 1st, 2021. And we'll do that. It lets me apply it. That's good. Current settings will be saved. Perfect. Exit setup. Yes, exit the setup utility. So there we go. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, I think it's, what is this? It's telling us to put a floppy disk into a floppy disk drive. Well, the only external floppy disk drives I have are, actually, is this a, I wonder if, no, I don't think that would work. I have a Dell external floppy disk drive, but I don't think it has the same connector on it. Nope, that's not the same connector, certainly, on either end. Uh, this is, this is the end that, Right? Yeah, this is the end that goes into the floppy disk. So yeah, that's that's not gonna work. Um, okay, well. All right, everybody. So I was just going through my correspondence with Alex to verify a couple of things. And it turns out that he actually did not send me photos of this machine powered up and booted into Windows. And he also sent me a user guide and it turned out to actually be this same manual slash pamphlet here that I downloaded from manuals lib. I guess we can take a look at the, uh, at what else we get here before we end off this video is I want to talk a bit more about the laptop uh, and kind of tell you guys the specifications, what you would get with it. So we already talked about the CPU, uh, the fact that you got a four gig hard drive and 32 megabytes of RAM. And of course that external 1.44 megabyte floppy disk drive. Uh, the screen is an 8.4 inch 800 by 600 SVGA Daybright ARX, the same thing up here, TFT active matrix color LCD with touchscreen and anti-reflective treatment. It's got a Neomagic NM 2160 video controller, two megabytes of VRAM, keyboard brightness control, FN and F2, okay. That's not doing anything. You probably have to be booted into Windows to utilize that as well. For audio, you've got a Yamaha YM F715 Sound Blaster Pro compatible audio controller, an integrated speaker, which is located on the front right here next to the microphone and headphone jacks. But yeah, there you have it, guys. That is unfortunately going to end it off for today's episode. Yeah, it's a bit unfortunate that we couldn't actually boot this thing up. And I still want to do that. And I'm going to see if I can figure out what floppy disk it's asking for. If I can find the floppy this drive the external drive so yeah if i can find that i will absolutely make a follow-up video but until then that's going to end it off for this video on the panasonic toughbook cfm 33 a very cool unique small form factor mini form factor even i think is a better uh, phrase for this uh laptop guys if you enjoy this episode, if you want to see more like it, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. Huge thank you to Alex once again for your very generous donation. Thank you to Zilch as well for sending over that uh, that huge kit of uh, Microsoft software. If you guys haven't seen the donations video, it will be down below and up in the cards if I haven't already used uh, it in a card in this video because you can't use it more than once. And huge thank you to all of you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you all in the next video.